there, and welcome to Ask the Warrior, where you get glorious geekiness and complete fucking crap. <laughs> I'm trying a new intro here. I'm trying to see if I can get it working, but anytime I try and make an intro, it fucking sucks. Uh, welcome, clan, and welcome to the final Ask the Warrior for 2013. This is the Ask the Warrior for December. As you could tell, I'm wearing a Christmas hat, a different Christmas hat than I was wearing in the Legion of Geeks podcast I did yesterday, which, thank you for everyone who joined us. I do apologize that this Ask the Warrior is a day late. And I actually didn't get a time to actually film Ask the Warrior yesterday because family was in the whole day, so Christmas, what do you expect? So I'm filming it now, and we're going to dive right into it. So we're going to dive right into the first set of questions, which come from Facebook. And uh, we'll start there and move on to Twitter and then YouTube questions. And also um, some Twitch questions. I was actually streaming a little bit before this because I wanted to play some Hearthstone. And I love playing it live, it's awesome. Uh, so the first six questions uh, come from... Tushar Bahijawa. I apologise if I butchered your name. I do apologise. And the first question is... More excited about DAI, Dragon Age Inquisition, or Witcher 3? Trick, tricky fucking question, because I'm really looking forward to fucking both of them. Uh, I love the Witcher series. I ha I've got about halfway through the first Witcher, and then I had to stop it. I think I might have lost my save, so I might need to start all over again. So I might stream that at a later date. I've got it on GOG, so I can just download it again like that. Um, so Witcher 2 is one of my personal fucking personal favourite games of 2012. It outshone Dragon Age 2 in a million different ways. Definitely in my top games of all time, in my opinion. Dragon Age Origins still to this day is my... Definitely, it surpasses Witcher, I'm going to say it right now. Dragon Age 2, I will still defend and say it's at least a decent game. Not a fantastic game, but a decent game. Um, but I'm going to be honest, I want to see what they're going to do with Dragon Age Inquisition. I am a bit more excited for that than Witcher 3. Even though Witcher 3 looks absolutely gorgeous. It looks amazing, and they're not holding back from what they're revealing about us. I really want to see if they can really, that Bioware can bounce back from the recent stuff that's happened to them with Dragon Age 2 and also Mass Effect 3. I want to see if Dragon Age Inquisition can bring Bioware back into the standings that I want them to be in. And I, I want to see if they can redeem themselves and all that. I'm a, I'm a sucker for that kind of thing, but also I just really want to see what goes on in the Dragon Age universe. And now that I've, I'm doing this Dragon Age D&D &D thing, I have to look into the lore more, I have to look at creatures. I've learned a lot more about Dragon Age than I did previously, even though I know like I know the universe fucking pretty damn fucking well, better than I should know my unit stuff. Um, give me an exam on fucking Dragon Age, Dragon Age lore, and I'll probably pass it with 50%. <laughs> um... But yeah, I absolutely am. I'm a bit more excited for Dragon Age Inquisition just because of all the stuff that's been shown and also from what I've seen. It just looks absolutely fantastic and I'm really, really fucking looking forward to it. I'm not going to lie. So it's Dragon Age Inquisition. I'm just a bit more excited for that than, uh, than uh, Witcher 3. But at the same time, I'm excited for both and I cannot wait to play both of them. Uh, also Cyberpunk 2077, that one I'm really excited for. Uh, next question from... Uh, Tushar, or Ushar. I don't know how to pronounce it, I do apologise, I'm sorry. Um, what are you studying at university? Uh, for those who don't know, I am at university and I am studying cybersecurity and networks. Uh, that's all you're getting. I actually have my books over there, which I actually need to start studying. I've actually taken a bit of a... I've decided to take a week break, which was from the day basically I ended uni, to roughly Christmas, um, to basically say, I'm going to relax and then I'm going to study, because I actually have two exams in January. Um... I, I, I studied that, and I don't want to go into too much about the course or where I'm at. I'm pretty sure you could guess if you just look up the course. Um, but I am studying that, and it's a, I'm in the third year of it. I was able to skip the first two years, luckily enough, uh, due to my current qualifications with my HND in Computing Tech Support. So I was able to skip the first two years, and I actually applied for university at the last minute because I wasn't expect. I actually didn't plan to go to university. I actually just wanted to take a year to work and then go to university. Uh, but then something happened in which it says, fuck it, I'll apply at university, and I'm in, basically. So, cybersecurity networks, and I'm going to be applying for jobs. Actually, I've been applying for jobs for about three years, but I'm going to be applying for jobs in that field uh, starting in January, uh, abroad, hopefully. Uh, next question, dogs or cats? Dogs. I love cats as well, but I've had dogs for as long as I can fucking remember, so dog person. I love cats as well. Cats are cute. So are dogs. Although I will say this way, cats are assholes. Dogs, not so, eh, some dogs could be assholes as well, but cats are just dicks. Cats think cats are like, hmm, I own this place, bitches. Dogs are just like, <laughs> this is my, my 
Oh, master, master. <laughs> I think do I just love dogs a bit more than cats. I think do I think dogs are a bit more respectful than cats. Cats are dicks. I'm not gonna lie. That some of them, I've, every cat, every cat I've ever like, don't get me. I've never had a cat, but there was a couple of cats. A couple. There's a couple of cats that wander about whenever whenever you live. Like there's always the owner that lets their cats out. And there was a dick of a cat in my in an area I used to live called Smokey, and he was a dick. He was an absolute dick. Like he was nice. He he'd come up to you. He'd rub up you. You'd clap him, but. If you try, if you did something weird or didn't let him go, like if you were just scratching him and then you just go to the wrong spot, fucking clawed you or tried to bite you in, fuck that cat, fuck that cat. It's probably dead now anyway. Uh, but yeah, I'm a dog person. I like dogs. Uh, fourth question from Tishar or Hushar, Hushar. I'm always confused. I don't know where you're from, and I don't want to look in your Facebook page to find out where you're from. But I think from the name, I'm probably thinking Middle East, maybe. I'm sorry. So I'm trying to think. I'm. I'm. I've got a couple. I've known a couple of people who've had T's at the start of the name, and it, it's silent from the Middle East. So I'm not too sure if it's Ushar or Tushar. Uh, I'll go with Tushar because it sounds cooler. It sounds better. <laughs> um, fourth question: When is the next bunch of Dragon Age tabletop videos coming out? Uh, when we schedule it. Uh, I'm very surprised. I'm not gonna lie. I'm very fucking surprised with the response that we've had from this. Uh, we planned on doing this for a while now. Uh, we originally planned on doing it with uh, another friend of ours who used to be a YouTuber. She's gone now, no one's going to mention her name. Um, she was going to DM it, but then she disappeared and things happened. Um, and then uh, we talked about it. We just we talked about it for ages. We just went, ah, oh, we'd love to do it, but uh, none of us are D skilled DMs and all that. And I just said, you know, I'll look into being a DM. And I did for, for quite a while. I planned it out. And then I was like, let's do this. And they were like, what? What? We got to do it? And yeah, that's basically why we did it. And Lady and Sandy was the last person we added to it. I initially just wanted to do three people, but Lady and Sandy uh, expressed interest in being in it. And uh, we let, we, and fuck it. We just said, right, four people, we can do it. And, uh, yeah, we are doing it. Uh, we are trying to do it a bi-weekly basis, like every second week. Uh, but it all comes down to one big thing. It all comes down to our schedules, unfortunately. And especially at Christmas time, I don't think there's going to be another session until after New Year's. And even then, it probably won't be until maybe midway through January, because I have exams to study for. And I'm pretty sure even in January, a lot of us are going to be busy. Um, we will try and do the next one, hopefully, maybe in January. I would like to do it before then, but I can't guarantee it because it comes down to scheduling, especially Christmas time is absolutely hectic. Even from Christmas to New Year is hectic for anyone. So I don't know when, but we will try and schedule a good one and please be patient. Um, if we had more time, we'd do it every single week if we could, but unfortunately all of our schedules are hectic as hell. And we have the Legion of Geeks to plan out, and we also have this to plan out. So do be patient. We will try and get it out. And I know some people have said, oh, I wish you could go for four hours and all that. We're going to stick to two hours from now on. Um, maybe one time we will do a four-hour one, but at the moment we just got to stick to two hours. So be patient. Um, we will try and schedule another one before Christmas, but I can't guarantee it. Um, I, I've said if we can, can we do it before, end, before the end of the new year, but... I can't guarantee it, so it'll probably be mid-January because I have to study for my exams, set my exams, and then get used to my new timetable, um, and I need to find out what days I, I can actually do, but we will try and schedule it, hopefully, but for mid-January, but if if all three, if Ability, Alex, and uh, MD and Sandy get back to me and say, let's do it on the 28th, let's do it, when's the next Saturday? If they say, let's do it on the 28th, which is this Saturday, I'll be like, okay, I'll see if I can, and I'll look at, if I can do it, we'll do it this Saturday. I can't guarantee it though, unfortunately, so I will see what everyone's doing, but at the moment, I can't guarantee it, sorry. But I will say this right now, thank you for the response. A lot of people are loving it, I'm getting a lot of people, I've actually had some people say to me, oh, you're a natural DA, and I'm like, thank you, I don't know why. A lot of, a lot of people are liking the way I'm telling the story, some people are loving the way I'm doing the game, um, and a couple of people have given me tips and helpful advice. I have, uh, I'm using a very, a lot of people ask what rule set I'm using, I'm using a very custom a rule set for it. I'm using a lot. I'm using the original Dragon Age rule sets, but also I've modified it more with the second edition of Dragon Age D and D from uh, the role play CDs done by It's Me JP with the DM Neil. And um, he's given a lot of helpful tips throughout the series. I love role play. It's fucking an awesome series. I highly recommend. It. If you've not watched it, go watch it. 
I'm using a lot of tips from him and I'm using a lot of the rules he's used throughout the series. So it is second edition but heavily modified. So I call it, I call it Neil D and D, basically. Neil D. There we go. Neil D, that's a new name for it. Um, I do have the second edition Dragon Dungeons and Dragons book, Monster Manual, Players Guide, and um Game Master Guide, all on my Amazon wish list. They're actually reprints, uh, so they are brand new basically, they're second edition. I'm going to try and get a hold of them for 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 the next session so I can actually have a proper read through them because the PDFs are shit. I'm going to say it right now. The PDFs are horrible. They're on my wish list right now. They're about £25 each, so I can only maybe get one every every month or so. But uh, I will try and get a hold of them so I can actually have a proper read through them, have better reference, and actually use much more more effective rules because I do have rules in mind which are what I use, but I need to check to make sure they're fair. So... Yeah, uh, thank you for the response, and I really do hope that this series can continue. And I know a lot of people have asked me, will you do a Mass Effect one? I am looking into doing a Mass Effect D&D thing, but at the moment, I can't guarantee that for one simple reason. I don't have, well, two, actually. One, I don't have time to do it. I really do not have time. I'm, I am I barely have enough time to do the Dragon Age one. If I wasn't at university and my this YouTube thing with my full-time gig, then, yeah, I would fucking do a Mass Effect D&D game, and I would try and schedule it to match up with everyone. I would try my damnedest. There is an uh, unofficial drag, a Mass Effect D&D rule set. It's very difficult to understand the aspects, but I think I can make it work with some changes to the rules. Um, I think I can make it work. I can't guarantee I can make it work, but I will look into doing a Mass Effect themed Dragon D Dungeons and Dragons game and other universes as well. I, I like I like using a main universe. I like using a universe that already exists. And maybe, I don't know, maybe if the cast of the Dragon Age 1 are interested, we'll do the same with Mass Effect. Uh, I know Alex would love that because he knows that universe a lot better than the Dragon Age 1. Uh, but at the moment, we're sticking to the Dragon Age 1 and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, maybe we'll have other members. I don't know. Maybe, I, I'm really enjoying the Dragon Age 1 right now. And once I finish university and if this YouTube thing turns into a full-time gig... I will try and do maybe one or two more uh, D D Dungeons and Dragons themed uh, series, basically, uh, because I really do love doing them. I I've had I have a shit ton of fun doing it, and I want to do more of them. I really, really do. I just don't have a lot of friends that I play D and D, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. So thank you. Uh, number five from Tushar is what's your favorite color? Purple. Fucking love purple. Uh, what is your typical, what's a tip, and it's the sixth and final question, what is your typical Xmas for you? Christmas, holidays, whatever. Uh, typically we, typically we wake up, own presents, go up to my grand's, my grand's an awesome cook by the way, she, uh, she's an awesome cook, but, uh, I don't need, I, my, basically we have a big Christmas feast, we have chicken, turkey, the sides, pigs and blankets, mashed toys, uh, mush, garlic mushrooms, uh, basically, it's very traditional. It's, it's an old-fashioned one. It's, it's just the traditional Christmas dinner you see, basically. Um, the salads, there's cock, there's um, prawn cocktails, soup, dessert, main... That, that you, it's very basic. It's very, very basic. We don't do anything strange. We don't do anything weird. And, yeah, we don't do it. That's basically a traditional Christmas. Normally, for me, after that, I normally only have a main and a dessert because all the stars that we normally get, I don't like. I don't, I'm not, I don't like soup. I don't like prawn cocktails. Uh, but we, we we have a traditional one, very, very, very simple. Nothing nothing big, nothing extravagant. Uh, there's a couple of drinks for everyone. I don't drink personally, but they, they have the occasional drink. I don't mind this family. And uh, we occasionally we, we give gifts up there as well. And uh, I normally just go and watch the Doctor Who Christmas special by myself. Because nobody else in the house likes Doctor Who. Um... Uh, that's the only bit since Doctor's been back, by the way. Not, not since we were a little kid. Um, and, yeah, we don't do much different. We, for me, personally, Christmas is just another day. I'm not a big, I'm not a big holiday person. I love what Christmas stands for. I really love this, what, what it stands for. My personal meaning to Christmas is don't be a dick to everyone. <laughs> it's the one day on Earth that we're not dicks to each other. That's how I see Christmas. Um, I see it as a time for us all to be together, be with family, be with close friends, and really appreciate what... What's came out of this this the year basically? That's the way I see Christmas and New Year. It's time to appreciate what you've done in the year 2013. As a year that you can can I look back on 2013 and be like that was a good year, or can I look back and go that was a shit fucking year? And then you aim to do better next year. That's how I always view Christmas and New Year's. Christmas is the time to say I did a good year. Let's celebrate that. New Year's the time to go. Let's start the new year off properly. That's the way I've always seen it. Um, I'm not big. I'm not big. 
hum, I'm not a humbug. I love the way what Christmas stands for, but yeah, I like it. Um, and can I say 2013 was a great year? Yeah, I can say it was a good year. It wasn't a great year. It could have been a lot better. Um, I passed my HND. I got an A and I got into university. Fucking awesome. I love that. And what can I say about the YouTube channel for this year? It's fucking amazing what it's done. It's hit the thousand subscriber milestone. Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for that. And the channel's been awesome this year. So I've had a good slap. I've had a fact, well, fuck it, I've had a great year so far. I've had a fucking great year. And I hope that 2014 is just as good a year. And hopefully I can find a fucking job. That's all I want from 2014. I can find a job in 2014. I'll be happy. Or this YouTube thing works around and can turn into a full-time gig. I know I keep saying that, but it's never going to happen. Uh, but thank you to she thank you to Shar for all your questions. I hope I answer them to the best of my abilities. And we will now move on to the next set of Facebook questions, which comes from Nicola Politi, who is an awesome guy. Number one, do you think that do you think there should be an advanced customized op uh, customization options in the next Mass Effect game? For example, being able to customize your armor, height, weight, etc. Um. I don't think I'll do that. I don't think we'll be able to customise the height and weight of our character like we used to in old old school uh, RPGs. I th I would like to see that in all honesty. I really would like... The more customization, the better in my mind. I really think that Bioware should take inspiration from uh, the Saints Row series, which I'm not saying go wacky like they do, but the Saints Row series has the best customization thing I've ever fucking seen in a game, in my opinion. It, the level of detail you can go into that game is fucking amazing. And I really do think they should take that tip with the characters. I would like that in the Mass Effect, in my opinion. I would like it if we could customise them a lot more. That would be awesome. I really would fucking love that. I don't have most... They'll probably just stick to the face, what we can modify. But even then, as long as you make let us choose... The, I want to be able to play a different race. I hope they do that. I would love that. The more customization, the better, in my opinion. Uh, Nicola's second question: Do you think the Uncharted, the do you think Uncharted and Tomb Raider crossover in a comic book form is more likely than the present day in video game form? Uh, yeah, highly fucking doubt there'll ever be a Tomb Raider slash Uncharted series crossover. Two completely different studios, uh, do it, and especially Square Enix, they're very fucking picky. Um, comic book. More likely. How do doubt this. And I, and also, I don't like Tomb Raider and Uncharted crossover. Just keep them separate. I'm not a big fan of fucking crossovers. I'm not a big fan of them. I'm going to be honest. I don't... I just think... Like, beyond Super Smash Bros. Melee and Marvel vs. Capcom, I don't like crossovers. I just don't think they work. I, like, beyond, like, the more combat... Mortal Kombat style with they've done, like, Injustice and MK vs. DC, that worked, but at the same time, it's... It just, it, it didn't work. Like, we couldn't, like, MK versus DC, we didn't get MK. We got a watered down versus of MK. Um, so I would prefer if there was no, I don't like game cross, video game crossovers. I really don't. I, I don't like them. They, they, they very rarely, rarely fucking work. And when they do, they're okay, not great. So, yeah, I wouldn't want a crossover in general. Number three from Nicola. What is your favourite Christmas memory? I can't fucking think of one. I've not had a horrible Christmas. No, I don't. I have good Christmases. There's never been a bad one. I'm trying to think of a good one. I'm trying to think of a good, my best memory. I think the best memory I can remember is waking up to a white Christmas. Um, we, when I was a kid, we used to get that. Every single year, without a fucking nanosecond of a delay... It would always be a white Christmas where I am. It would always be a white Christmas. Waking up to that is one of the best feelings I've ever had in my life. And I just love that. Waking up to the sight of a white Christmas is one of the best things that's ever happened to me. I absolutely Waking up as a kid, I loved that. Looking out and seeing the snow laid there. Going out making snowmen. Making, having snowball fights. I used to eat snow as a kid. And it's kind of... Don't ask. Um... Uh, that's uh, waking up to that and going out and having a snowball fight with my cousin my, and my mum and my family and all that making a snowman having an absolute ball and waking up to a white Christmas is probably one of the best memories I've ever had as is we don't do a lot for Christmas uh, our Christmas is very much the same every fucking year we don't do anything big for it we don't go on holiday we don't go anywhere we just think we should be with our family that's about it and I absolutely loved 
waking up to a white Christmas as a kid. Unfortunately, as the years have gone on, we don't get white Christmases here anymore. We get, we still get snow, but we get snow in March or February. And we actually have had a bit of snow for the past couple of weeks, but it's, it's never landed. And I really wish I could have a white Christmas. I wish there could be a white Christmas. I honestly think that if everyone, everyone could, I wish everyone could experience one white Christmas in their life. I really fucking do. I really do, because it is an amazing feeling. Don't get me wrong, snow's a fucking pain in the ass afterwards, but a, nothing beats a white Christmas, in my opinion. I really wish there was another one this year, but I highly doubt it. There's, there's no the right weather, in my opinion. I really wish it was, but no. So, waking up to a white Christmas is someone... Is, anytime I think of Christmas, I, I I think of the white Christmases I had as a kid. That's that's the one. That's some of my best memories. Unfortunately, I have a shit memory, so I can't remember too much. <laughs> Um, number four, most anticipated film of 2014. I'm a te- okay, most anticipated is probably, maybe, a lot of the superhero ones, Captain America 2, especially, um, Ant-Man I think is coming in next year, I'm excited for that. The game, I'm going to say this right now, there is one movie which you all know I've fucking raised on, I'm anticipating it because I'm anticipating it to fail and I know that I will be watching it, it's the Man of Steel sequel slash Batman vs Superman slash Batman vs Superman vs Wonder Woman slash call it a fucking Justice League film already you fucking twats if you just got a hash in and toss a fucking Justice League film already sorry I'm anticipating that, anticipating that to fail miserably it'll make a fuck ton of money I guarantee it but I'm anticipating it to suck balls. I, I, I'm anticipating that for that reason, and I will rip that a new asshole if it is. I'm anticipating that there's a little bit of hope left in my heart from when I was a wee kid. The wee Scotty and me is like, it still got hope. It can still be awesome. And the big one of me says, shut the fuck up, you twat, you're wrong. I'm excited for, I'm anticipating it to fail. Most anticipated is the superhero ones and Man of Steel 2 slash Batman slash whatever the fuck else I called it. Um, I'm anticipating that because I, I am really wanting to see how bad it is. I really I have no I have very little hope for it, very very fucking little. In all honesty, I'm on, I'm near enough on the verge of not going to go and see it, but I probably will. So I will say I'm anticipating that because I want to see how bad it is, and I fucking hope that it, I, I hope it's not bad, but I know it's going to be. I know it's going to suck. I just know it in my gut that it's going to suck, and my gut's very rarely wrong. Final question from Nicola. Eh, oh no, there's two more questions. Uh, no, that says his final question. Fifth question. In the Assassin's Creed franchise, which assassin did you find the most... Com- oh no, there's two. Most interesting between A- Altair, Ezio, Connor, or Edward, and why? Ezio, boring as... Sh- uh, sorry, Altair, boring as shit. Ezio, charismatic as fuck, fucking loved him. Connor, dull, bland, could not stand him for fucking five minutes. Edward Kenway is my favourite by hands fucking down. I loved Edward Kenway's story. I fucking loved it. I loved his character. I loved the performance. His story was fan fucking tastic. Edward Kenway is my favourite assassin out of them all because he was a real character. He isn't even an assassin. He well, you kind of wonder how he's got all that training, but you're yeah, like, he, he picked it up. He's a fucking pirate. Um, he is, in my opinion, the best character that's came with the Assassin's Creed franchise in a long ass time, in my opinion. And I personally think that he is an outstanding character. And I just loved his development. He was actually, in my opinion, the most real character, um, main character out of the entire Assassin's Creed franchise. Altair, too, too bland. Ezio was charismatic and he was a real ca- was real in a way until a certain point. Connor couldn't stand him. Uh, Alt- Edward is just amazing. Uh, he was the most believable character, in my opinion. And I'm not going to lie, I cried. I cried at the ending and at certain scenes in that game because of how well he of a character he is. And I'm even thinking about it, I'm tearing up because I absolutely loved it. I just think that Edward is the best character that came with the Assassin's Creed franchise in a long-ass fucking time. I highly recommend anyone who's not played it, go play Assassin's Creed 4. The story is exceptional in my opinion. And I absolutely loved Edward Kenway. He is my favourite character in the Assassin's Creed franchise, in my opinion. I absolutely believe that, and I will defend that. Okay? Take your Ezio and shove him. Edward Kenway all the way. Fucking love them. Absolutely amazing character. So well developed. And 
I can't tell you why I love him without going into spoilers. And I don't want to do that. Because I wouldn't want to spoil it for anyone. But I'll say this right now. What we find out about him with his flashbacks and at the ending, it broke my heart. But at the same time, it made me smile. It was like, oh, so sweet. And I cried. I'm not, I cried. I loved it. I'm a sucker. I'm a sap. Give me a break. But yeah, Edward Kenway, hands fucking down. I loved them. Uh, sixth and final question. Brussels sprouts or Yorkshire pudding? Yorkshire fucking pudding. Brussels sprouts can go fuck themselves. Uh, okay, we'll move on to the questions I got from Twitch. I got one or two from there. Uh, first question from Twitch is, what was your favourite boss in any Dragon Age game? Ah, uh, yeah, I've already answered that. I've already answered that in a previous Ask the Warrior. Uh, what is your most anticipated game of next year? Already answered that. Uh, and what? Oh, this one's interesting. <laughs> Who would the Scottish represent in Thedas besides the odd Ferelden? This is interesting. Um, this is rather interesting. I when I got asked this, I was like, "Ooh, that's actually kind of interesting." Uh. And, yeah, the, the re as I said, I'd need to have a look up about a lot more information about them, but from what I've been able to find out, read up about them, I said, I need to have a proper read of the Avars um, from the Dragon Age D&D game, the Avars and them. Uh, MD is playing the character in there, and in my, and she describes them, and in my opinion, they sound a lot like fucking Scottish people. Um, I need, in fact, fuck it, I'll grab the... I'll grab the the D and D book. Uh, hopefully, not knocking over half my shit, and have a quick read of it. I need to double check it though, because the way she's described them, apparently the Avars are very much like the Scottish. Um, I need to actually look up the Avars. Uh, Scree Wardens, Ward of Thedas, Railden, Nobility, uh, Commerce, Chantry, Elves, Dwarves. Living in Ferelden, making a character, abilities, that's not that. Ah, here they are, the Avarian Hillsmen. The Avarian Hillsmen, also known as the Avars, are rugged rugged human people who make their homes in the Forceback Mountains. In centuries past, they, they were of the main many barbarian tribe that lived in and around the Ferelden region. When the Alamari clans united 400 years ago under the first king of Ferelden, the Avars refused to join them. The Hillsmen were too independent, too proud, and too stubborn to pay homage to any king. Their continued raiding into the lowlands led them, many, led them to be many longer and bitter wars, but ultimately the Avars alone could not stand up against the united forces of Ferelden. The Hillsmen were driven back into the mountain homes, but no commander dared to fight them in their home ground. Since, the, since there has been an uneasy peace between the Avars and Ferelden, today the Avari Hillsmen live in the Frostback Mountains to do trade with the dwarves and some of the Avars described in the lowlands to the work and mercenaries and adventurers. Most people in the Ferelden consider the Hillsmen uncivilized barbarians, while the Avars them, they, they think they are old, old fools, weak and corrupt. It is thus no greater surprise that they are still sp sporadic raids from the Frostbacks, but the Hillsmen have learned to strike quickly and retreat to their... If that isn't a fucking Scotsman, I don't know what fucking is. Like, live in the Highlands and are too fucking proud to be... Are too proud to... To, to kneel to a king. Too proud to kneel to the, to the opposing forces. They all united against us, but we still fought them off. And they're still fucking around. So, the Avaran Hillsmen, they're definitely... From reading that, just that alone, you can't tell me that that doesn't sound like fucking Scottish people, in my opinion. And I don't know what it is. Is it the Hillsmen? Highlands? Um... Too independent to kneel before king. Everyone else united, and you're like, "Fuck you, bitches! We're gonna fight out on." And I, I just, I read up, I read up the Avarn Hillsman a wee bit more, and I absolutely love the description. I'll probably, if I eventually do, eventually get to play a game of D and D where I get to play, make my own character, which I doubt it's gonna happen anytime soon. Um, I definitely will make up a couple of Avarn Hills. I, if I cannot make an Avarn Hillsman if it's Dragon Age, if not, I'll try and make something similar. But I love the Avarn Hillsman. They sound awesome, and they definitely are Scottish. Um, so yeah, I love the Avarn Hillsman, that's it. Uh, I'm going to split the part here, so thank you for joining me for the first part of Ask the Warrior, and I will see you all in the next part. See you there.